Santiago, how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is for each player, you'll give them their set of cubes in their color. You'll give them their proposed canal marker. All players will get an extra blue irrigation marker and all players will start with $10. You can use the paper money that came with the game. I'm using poker chips. Next, you'll lay out the game board and place this well marker anywhere agreed on by the players, but it has to go on an intersection point of these dark brown lines. So it could even go on the edges or some of the corners. Typically, the further out from the center, the more difficult the game will be for the players. Next, you'll set out the extra irrigation markers. These serve as a timer for the game. In a five player game, which I'm setting this up for, you use nine irrigation markers. If this was a three or four player game, you would use 11. Next, you'll create the stacks of face down plantation tiles. Since I'm setting this up for a five player game, you would shuffle these completely and create five stacks of nine tiles each. If this was a three or four player game, you would create four stacks of 11 tiles each. The number of tiles in each stack match the total number of extra irrigation markers, so it synchronizes based on the number of rounds in the game. In a five player game, there will be nine rounds in the game. In a three or four player game, there will be 11 rounds. Finally, randomly choose a player to be the starting canal overseer, give them that token, and you're ready to start the game. The first phase of each round is to reveal the top tile from each of the stacks and then now bid on these tiles. You're always going to start with the player to the left of the current overseer and then go clockwise ending with the overseer who will get the final bid. Each player during this phase has the option of making a bid or passing and not bidding anything. The only important rule is that your bid cannot match the amount of any prior bid. So if this first player decides to bid $3, then the next player in clockwise order can bid one, two, four, but they can't match three. They can also pass and bid nothing. It's also okay for multiple players to pass. So in this example, let's say this first player to have the option, they bid three, it goes clockwise. Let's say this black player, they decide to pass. This player also decides to pass. Let's say this player decides to only bid one and then gets finally to the overseer and they decide I'm gonna bid four so I can be the high bidder. The very next thing we do, the second phase of the game is to immediately change the overseer. The overseer token is now going to go to the player that bid the lowest. Since we had two players that passed, it's actually gonna to go to the very first player that passed. Once we've changed the overseer, we now place tiles. This phase is going to go in bid order from highest bid to lowest bid. So we know this player bid the highest, so they get to go first. They would turn their bid into the bank and they get their choice of any of these tiles. Let's say they choose this one. This tile can now be placed anywhere on the game board. Strategically, it's usually better to be closer to the well and the canal. Once the tile is placed, that player will place cubes equal to the printed number of workers on the tile. It's either going to be two or some tiles have one worker and those cubes simply get placed on the tile now. The next highest bid is this player. They'll turn their money into the bank and they'll also get their choice of any of the tiles. Let's say they want this one and they can place it anywhere. Maybe they'll put it, let's say they put it right here and they would put one of their cubes on the tile. This player had the next high bid. They'll turn it into the bank. Let's say they choose this tile. They decide to put it up there and they'll place their cubes on the tile. Now we get to the players that pass. So both these players passed in bid zero. When you get to the passing players, you go in reverse pass order. So since this was the first player to pass and this was the last player to pass, this one will have the first choice of these remaining tiles. So they can select any of the remaining. The important rule is when a player did a pass, instead of an actual bid, they get one less cube than the printed number of workers on the tile. 
So by placing this tile, they're only going to get to place one cube on this tile. If this was a tile that only had one worker printed, they wouldn't get to place any of their cubes on it. But they still get to select a tile even if they passed. Per the normal rules, they can place it anywhere on the game board. And then since they passed, they would put one less than the printed number. And this is the last player to go, so they get last choice of tiles. Let's say they pick this one. Again, they can put it anywhere. Let's just say they put it out here. Since they were a passing player and didn't have a bid, they get one less in the printed number, so they would place their cube there. And that finishes this phase of the round. One special rule in a three-player game only, there would be one tile left over. In a three-player game, whoever the highest bidder was for that round gets to take that tile and place it on the board. They don't get to put any cubes on the tile, they simply get to place it. And it has to be placed next to a non-desert tile. A desert tile is a tile that got flipped over, and we'll see that, how that happens in a later phase. So after we finish the tile placement phase, we now go to bribing the overseer. So again, we always start to the left of the current overseer, and we're going to go clockwise around the table. Each player is going to have the option to make a bribe, to add to a bribe, or to simply pass. To make a bribe, it's a minimum of $1, and then you will put your color, your proposed canal marker, somewhere on the board that you propose that the overseer build the canal. So let's say this player who's the first to act decides the minimum bid has to be one, but let's say they bid three, and they want to propose that the overseer build a canal right here. A couple rules, canals have to be adjacent to either the well or an existing canal on the board. Also, they have to be placed on these dark lines and they can't cut across an intersection. So this player couldn't propose that the canal be placed there because that's crossing that intersection. And it has to be adjacent to the well or an existing canal. So they propose that the canal get placed there. They've bid three, so their bribe can just go adjacent to that to keep things organized. This next player has the option of passing, or they can add to an existing bribe. So let's say, obviously, this proposed canal really supports them, and so they want to make sure that the overseer really finds appeal in that. So they may decide, you know what, I'm just going to support this existing bribe. I like this canal proposal, and I'm going to add $2 to that bribe. So just keep track of which player has which bribe amount, but now the total bribe is 5 for this proposed canal. So this next player also has the option of passing, making a minimum bribe of one, or adding to a bribe. So they also want to propose a canal, but they want it to come this way. They can bid one or any amount. You can match other bids or other bribes. So let's say they try to match it. So they also want to bribe five for this one. Next we get to the white player, and let's say they decide to pass. So they're not going to make any bribe. So we continue to go to clockwise, and now we end with the overseer. Now the overseer has a couple choices. They can take any of these bribes. They can take the low bribe, they can take the high bribe. Whichever one they want to take, basically they would take the money, and they would replace the proposed canal with one of the round marking canals. So in this example, let's say they really like this five bid. They'll replace the existing canal with that one, this will just get returned to that player. The overseer would actually take the bribe. These players would get their bribes back since the overseer did not take their bribes. And this money would get returned to those players. Instead of taking one of the bribes, the overseer also has the option to pass on all the bribes and build the canal in a way that they want to. They would have to pay $1 higher than the highest combined bid so we saw this bribe was five, this combined bribe was five, so the overseer would have to pay six because that's one higher than the highest combined bribe. They would return all the bribes, return all the proposals, and they could build the canal however they want to build it. Same rules apply. It has to stem off of the well or off of an existing canal. But in this example, the overseer took the bribe and they put the canal that way. One other scenario, if all players pass, 
the overseer has two options. Just like normal, they could pay $1 higher than the highest bribe. The highest bribe was zero if all players pass, so they could pay just $1 back to the bank and place the canal like they'd want to. Or, if all players pass, the overseer also has the option of passing. If they do that, no canal will get placed this round, and that canal marker would simply get removed from the game. After the bribing phase is over, we now go to the extra irrigation phase. Again, we'd start with the player left of the overseer. The player has the option to use their once per game extra canal marker. So this player could decide, I'm going to use this. Normal rules would apply. I want to make sure my tiles get irrigated. So I'm going to place this right there. Once a player exercises the option to use an extra irrigation, that immediately ends that phase. Only one extra irrigation canal can be placed each game round. So let's say the player decides they don't want to use it, they want to save it for later in the game. So they decide to pass, not use their extra irrigation. We'd go to the next player in clockwise order. Let's say this player, yes, they do decide to use it. So obviously they don't want to place it there, maybe they'll place it here to help only them. Again, they only get that option once during the entire game. Once they use their blue extra canal marker, it's gone. And once it gets placed, that phase is gone. These players don't even get the option during this game round to use their extra irrigation. So once an extra irrigation marker has been placed or all players have passed on their option, ending again with the overseer who has the option, we would now end that phase and go to the drying phase. During this phase, all non-irrigated tiles are going to lose one cube. In order to be irrigated, you have to be orthogonally adjacent to one of the canals. So even though this tile is diagonal to the well, that does not count. They have to have water along one of their edges. So we can see both of these tiles are irrigated by that canal, and this tile is irrigated by that canal. So they're safe. We can see this one is not adjacent, so it would lose one cube, along with this one. That's also not adjacent, so it loses one cube. If a tile had no cubes to give up, that's when it actually gets flipped over to a desert. So this tile lost a cube this round. Next round, if it's still not irrigated, that's when it has no cube to lose, and we get flipped over to the desert side. The final phase of the round is income. All players are going to get an extra $3 of income added to their supply. And at this point, we're either going to go to the next round or we're going to end the game if we finished all the prescribed rounds. The first step of final scoring is to flip over to the desert side all non-irrigated tiles, even if they still had cubes on them. So even if this tile at the end of the game only still had cubes, it's not irrigated. So it's going to get flipped over to the desert side, along with this one is going to get flipped over. Next, each player is going to earn money for all the tiles where they actually have cubes. Basically, you're going to look at any color adjacent tiles. So this is a chili plantation because it's adjacent. Again, adjacency is orthogonal. That would not count as adjacent. But these two tiles are the same color, the same type, so they're adjacent. So this tan player would simply count the number of color adjacent tiles multiplied by the number of cubes they have on that plantation. So this player has two cubes times two adjacent tiles, so they would get $4 from the bank. The white player only has one cube times two adjacent chili tiles, so they would get $2 from the bank. Here's a different scoring example. Let's say white wasn't there, and let's say this was actually tan who got another tile there. So in this, is, this example, two tiles times four cubes, so the tan player would get $8 from the bank. We can see for this plantation, it's only a single tile, so the purple player would get two times one, so they would get $2 from the bank. It doesn't matter what color of cubes are on the adjacent tiles. So let's say there was a potato tile here, here, here. Doesn't matter if they were empty or had other players' cubes on them. The purple player would get their two, times the one, two, three, four adjacent tiles. So you look at the color adjacent tiles in the plantation, multiplied the by the total number of cubes that player has on the plantation. Once you dole out all the final money from all those plantations, players will add that money along with any cash they already had in their hand. Most money wins the game.
Before we end, let's talk about one other variant, and that's the palm tree variant. During setup, there's three palm trees that you can place anywhere on the game board, agreed on by the players. And then during the regular tile placement phase, tiles can be placed on these spots. You would simply take one of the tiles that was selected per the normal rules. You would put the palm tree on top of the tile where it was, and you place the normal number of cubes as indicated. So let's say that was the gray player placing that. It was a normal placement, so they get one cube. Basically, this palm tree is now going to act as an additional cube for this player. So when we got to final scoring, this would count as two times one color adjacent tile, assuming it was irrigated. If all player cubes eventually get removed from the tile, we can see this one isn't irrigated, so during the drying phase, the cube would get removed. And let's say we had another drying phase and it's still not irrigated, the palm tree would actually get removed. So it's actually delaying the turning over of this tile to a desert. So it's still not irrigated, it would get removed. Also, let's say this did get irrigated throughout the game. During final scoring now, this would just count as a neutral tile. So any other player scoring maybe adjacent potato tiles and plantations could count this as part of their plantation because this palm tree kept it alive. But like we've mentioned, if the irrigation wasn't there and we got to the drying phase, the palm tree would get removed and then eventually this would get flipped over to a desert. So that's the palm tree variant. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Santiago.